Welcome everybody, my name is Ethan Donald and this is Exact Fat for SolarWorks. I'm joined today by application engineer Keith McQuan. Today we're going to be talking about how to double your design productivity for all types of custom fabricated insulation covers and blankets. And when we say all types, we mean all types, regardless of whether it's vessels, equipment with irregular surfaces, flat surfaces, piping of all types with straight pipes, bends, elbows, accessories, fittings, valves, flanges, and instruments. Our example today is going to be a pipe with a valve stem and a bend. We're going to be working on this particular part with three layers, an outer layer, an insulation layer, and an inner layer, and we're going to be producing 10 copies. The agenda for the seminar today is uh, going to cover five elements of the workflow, how to flatten or create our initial patterns, adding pattern design features is going to be the second part we're going to discuss, nesting, documentation, and production will be the remainder of the five items. That in mind, we're going to switch now to our live view. And you can see here we have our pipe with our pipe bend and a valve stem. And we're just going to pan around here so we can see the layers on this particular part. So you can see if we zoom in that we do have, in fact, three layers. An inner layer, a middle layer, which is going to represent the insulation, and an outer layer, which is going to represent the insulation uh, uh, jacket or cover. So let's go ahead and start our process. The first step in the process is to create our initial pattern pieces. We do this very simply by selecting the faces on the model. And we're going to use different faces here. So we're going to take these three that we just selected and we're going to knit them together to create one piece. We're going to select on the valve stem here. When we want to select the inner layers, we just select right through the outer, outer section. So you can see we just have to um, uh, click on the piece and then create the, create the pattern piece. And it's that simple. And we've got one more layer to go here, which is the inner layer. So we'll create those pieces as well. We're going to knit those uh, bends, uh, pieces in the bend together also. So that's it. Now we have our pattern pieces created. And we're going to convert this to an exact flat part. And what that's going to entail is we're going to take this, the faces on the part we have here. And we're going to create an initial flat pattern. And we're going to create edge references. So where one uh, pattern piece has to be sewn to another, the beginning and the end of those, uh, ed those edges are going to be referenced and, uh, and, and, and cataloged. We go into our flattener view as the next part of the process, and you can see that we've got our 3D model on the right-hand side and our 2D flat patterns on the left-hand side. So the first part of the process is we're going to select the pieces to assign materials to. This is going to be for the flattening part of the process. So this is the outer layer. We're going to assign a different material. This is the insulation to the, the next set of pattern pieces. And we're going to pick yet a different material for the inner or hot layer, or perhaps cold layer as it may be. And there we go. Now we've assigned a variety of engineering properties to the materials that will enable us to create an accurate flat pattern. So the first part of our process is we're going to create a new mesh which is going to accurately represent the pattern pieces that we have and the benefit for the um, for, for the process here is that you're going to increase your accuracy and decrease your solve time. So this will take about a, you know, it depends on the complexity and the number of pieces. It can take anywhere, say, from 30 seconds to a minute. And if you have a computer which supports multi-threading, our technology certainly does support multi-threading, so you can blaze through this pretty quickly. So we've got almost done. We've got one more piece to go, and then we'll start the optimization piece of the, of the, of the, of the, of the process. And you can see that the last piece down there at the bottom is still waiting, and there it goes. So now we'll optimize this. You can see the color coding there. That represents stress and sag. Sag are wrinkles, and stress is where the fabric is pulling tight. And what the algorithm is trying to do is eliminate all the stress and sag on the various pattern pieces. And as it runs through, it's probably going to go through about 1,500 operations, but it's, or iterations, pardon me, but it's very similar to what a master pattern maker would do. A master pattern maker would search for places of stress and search for places of sag and try and eliminate both. And you can see our optimization process is complete. Now what we have to do is just update our edge references because the edges have changed with the optimization. And now we're going to go into our pattern view. So let's update our pattern pieces with the new ones we just created. This won't take too, too long. And there we go. So now we've completed 
two parts of the process. We've, or pardon me, one part of the process, we've created our initial flat patterns. We're just going to move these pieces around and orient them a little bit differently so that they're visually uh, um, analogous to the way that these pieces would be put together and they're in separate sort of geographic areas so that we can, um, we can keep track of what we're doing here. This is particularly important for projects where the pieces may be in the hundreds. Uh, this, is, this is a fairly simple, um, simple process, but you can see all we do is we click on an edge and the algorithm automatically finds the neighboring edge and orients the piece um, very close to it. So we'll just move these two pieces here and the last, uh, these are pieces from the valve stem. And you can see we've also got three colors here. The colors are represented with the different types of materials. So let's now switch to our pattern environment. Let's go to our pattern environment and let's add some features here. So what I would like you to take note of is when we click on an edge, we automatically get the secondary edge to which the initial one is associated found for us. We don't have to chase it around. We don't have to hunt for it. Here we're gonna put a, a, a seam allowance in here. You can see that um, it automatically updates both, both edges. Now we're gonna go a little bit slower this time. So we're gonna select an edge there's the primary edge, you see the secondary edge is automatically selected. Now we're just going to go ahead and put a, a seam allowance on here. This is a tremendous time saver if you're working uh, compared to other programs that are primarily 2D based. You can uh, very quickly blaze through your pattern design. We're going to add some notches now. So we're going to put a V notch in here. There's three and uh, you can see that very quickly we could add notches in here. The notches are perfectly aligned. We don't have to match notches from, uh, from the first edge and the second edge and we can put any number of notches in there and we can uh, place them with precision as well. So that's a, a quick little flyby of uh, pattern engineering. We're gonna go now into our nesting view and um, show you how our nesting uh, operation is, is, is conducted. You can see uh, right off the top, we've got three different auto-generated markers and that's in the top left there. There's the first one, the second one, and the third one. And we have three because we have three different types of materials. So let's go ahead and nest these materials. You just click the nest button. There we go, nest. And the algorithm starts to pack all the pieces down. And it's uh, set to run for one minute. So you can see you can, you can adjust the run time. It can be scheduled for any length of time depending on the number of pieces or the complexity of your nest. You can have it run overnight. You can queue it, you can schedule it. But we're gonna stop this. We're gonna accept it here because this is not terribly complicated. Accept that, we'll go to the next one. Yep, we'll nest these. This is the insulation layer, so this would be cut uh, maybe with a different cutter, um, maybe cut by hand, um, maybe plotted out, but uh, we'll get to the export part of this process again in, in, in just a moment. So we'll just stop that one there and accept that. And let's go to the final one. We'll nest these pieces here. You can see it takes about a second or two for the algorithm to initialize, and then it starts the process of packing everything down. And these are incorporating the best compaction algorithms in the world. These algorithms are used in almost every major uh, Fortune 500 company's nesting environment. Um, large manufacturers all over the world use the same compaction algorithm, so you do get a high yield with these, uh, with these algorithms. So let's just stop that there. We'll accept that as well. And now we're going to go and export these nests. So you can see that the, the nests are pretty easy to create. Um, we have a number of presets depending on the type of cutter you have, or if you have a plotter, you can certainly plot these pattern pieces out. You can lay them over your material and hand cut. But let's just select, say, for example, an Eastman cutter here. Let's uh, export the pieces. And even though we haven't shown, we do have a variety of, uh, of, of ways to edit the, the parameters around the nest, like edge buffers and piece gaps and uh, lay rules such as rotation increments and things like that. And we can also adjust grain lines and have um, um, uh, those constraints put in there very easily. But in the interest of brevity, we didn't show that right now. If anyone's interested, please do give us a call. We'd be happy to show you. And you can see the actual nest on the right-hand side and the exported nest on the left-hand side. If we zoom in, you can see the notches on certain pieces. Um, there you go, and those notches would be perfectly lined up uh, based on our edge reference geometry. So let's close out of here.
You can now take that and you can export to the cutter. But let's go into our documentation view. So let's launch into that view. The first thing we're going to do is select a template. The templates are fully customizable. Uh, we're going to create a or select a template that we, we've created, but you, any template supported by SOLIDWORKS, some of the prepackaged ones are available, uh, or ones that you wanted to customize yourself, that they're, they're available as well. So you can see that the first part of the process is very easy. You just simply drag your pattern pieces onto the document block. We are using a B block right now, but we can easily support A, C, D, or even E blocks if necessary. And if you just uh, take note that we have the pieces aligned in the same way that we have aligned them from the pattern design view. So all of that uh, uh, information is transferable to our documents. And the fidelity between the different environments, pattern design and documentation, for example, is very, very high. In fact, it's exact. So what changes you make in one area are reflected in another area. And we will talk about that in just a moment. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to put a table in. So let's go ahead and put um, a piece table. So it's just a table of pieces. And now let's put some uh, balloons corresponding to that uh, piece table in here. So you can see it's very easy to annotate the documents. You do not have to export to a third party tool like Adobe Illustrator or other drawing tools to create your documents. You don't have to digitize pieces in. You don't have to sketch around perimeters. Uh, all the information is available from one environment to the next. So now we're going to put a material table in. And for the interest and sake of making things very clear, we're just going to use a different color. The, this is not necessary, but it's a best practice. So if you, if you, do, our, if you do create sewing operations or manufacturing uh, assembly operations, you can have your documents be very, very intuitive. If your operators and your assemblers can read them quickly and understand them, that increases their productivity, helps them get their job done faster. And you can take note that we've used a different uh, balloon type there just to make it that much more easy to read. This is all features that you can customize and put in the manner which your uh, industry or your company uh, generally works in. So next we'll put a, a, an, a, a, an edge table in. And you can see that we've got four edges that corresponds to the four seam allowances that we put in from the pattern design process. And we'll change the color on this one as well. Now we're just going to put some balloons in and again we have a different balloon type. So very quickly we can call out the edges here. And if you don't use one of the, the pre-packaged table um, sets, you can actually create custom tables yourself with any number of rows and columns, put your own custom information in there. And lastly, we'll go ahead and put a notch table in here as well. And we'll keep the notch table at the bottom because we're just going to save a bit of room for uh, making some changes a little bit later on. Let's just drag that notch table down a little bit further. There we go. Okay. And we'll put some notch balloons in there. There we go. So there you have it. There's the basics of documentation. So let's just review what we've done so far very quickly. We're going to go back to our, our main model environment. We're going to look at our 3D model. See our 3D model has been updated with the material assignments. Now we're going to go to our flattener view. You can see that our flattener view has been updated with the layout that we have uh, arranged our pieces in. Let's now go to our pattern environment. You can see that our pattern environment reflects all of the things that we've done so far in addition to the features which we've added. We zoom in here, you can see that we've got our seam allowances and our notches on these pieces. And then let's go uh, to our nest environment, which has our various uh, nests for the different material types. The beauty of the program is in the integration. This is an industry first where we have all of these different pieces working in one technology platform where the changes you make in one area get automatically reflected in another area. So we're going to go ahead and make a change right now just to show you that. So let's go back to our pattern environment. We're going to put a new seam allowance down here at the bottom on the blue piece. Yeah, we're just going to click the edge. Notice the primary edge is selected. We'll put a seam allowance on there. Okay. Now, let's go back to our drawing view. And let's just take a look at the table. 
and we'll note that the table has been updated. Now there's a number of, uh, there's two extra uh, edges that have been added there. So let's put some balloons in there for the, um, for the, for the additional edges. And you can see the changes we made in the pattern design environment automatically reflected in the documentation environment. So it's very quick and very easy. Safe if you forgot to put a seam allowance in or if you wanted to change the seam allowance or if you wanted to delete a seam allowance. Um, it's not a problem. So there we have the update. And let's go back to our pattern design environment. And we have the seam allowance reflected there. But there's one more thing now. We've changed the perimeter of the pattern pieces so we have to go update the nest for the third marker and again now we have the granularity you can see that the pieces are overlapping there a little bit because we built the nest based on a different perimeter edge so now actually we can update this nest put the pieces in again and nest it again very quickly very easily and uh, as this uh, nest initializes and starts to run um, um, we just want to again reiterate the fact that the environments are all integrated and that you have very, very, very precise revision and change control. And when you make a change in one area, it's reflected in another area. And as you can see, our nest is packing itself down, but let's just stop it there. We'll accept it and go from there. So there you have it. That is an overview of exact flat for SOLIDWORKS. And we won't bother to export this again because you've seen that already. But let's just go back to our. Um, our, um, um, our main presentation screen right now because we've seen the technology. So let's just uh, exit out of here and let's just review what we did today. So we talked about flattening. We talked about, we talked about flattening. We talked about pattern design, nesting, documentation, and, and production. And we called out the fact that the beauty of the program is in the fact that these tools are all integrated. You get revision and change control built into the program. And uh, um, it's a way to increase your productivity quite dramatically. And what you do with your productivity is up to you. If you want to use your productivity improvements to increase profit, if you want to use them to win customers, if you want to use them to grow revenue, that's entirely what, what um, uh, uh, you know, you can decide how to do that. Um, and I will say, just in closing, that the program is incredibly easy to get started. We have basic training starting at about four hours, standard is about eight hours, and advanced is about 16 hours. So if you're an experienced CAD user, like a SOLIDWORKS user, uh, you will be able to pick this program up and run with it very quickly. And in the first or second month, you will start to see productivity improvements that are quite dramatic. So with that being said, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us today. My name once again is Ethan Donald with Keith McQuan from ExactFlat. And if you have any questions, please visit us on the web.